Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. 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 And He will lift you up. And He will lift you up. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing
joining us this morning. God bless you. We are uh, blessed that you are listening to us and that you were able to tune in uh, this morning. Thank you for attending our online worship service. And as we continue uh, with these services, we ask that you continue to be safe. Uh, Next Sunday, however, January the 17th, uh, 2021, we are actually resuming our online worship. uh, I messed that up. Let me start over. Not our online. Not our online. We're not going to resume our online nothing. We'll be doing online and in person. Both. Yeah, we'll be, we'll we're going to do our Bible class online yeah. and live stream, but we're going to do in person uh, worship as well. All right. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. We are blessed and honored uh, to have you listening to the videos and watching our online services. Uh, thank you uh, for tuning in. Uh, next Sunday, however, uh, January the seventeenth, two thousand twenty-one. We are going to begin meeting in person again. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to be um, live streaming because that that is also going to be happening. And we are also uh, continuing our pre-recorded uh, Bible classes on Sunday morning. Uh, so please uh, continue to tune in if you if you don't feel safe coming uh, and worshiping in person. Please continue to watch us online. Uh, drop us a line uh, once in a while uh, at minister at ntxcoc.com to let us know that you're being encouraged, that you're being uplifted, or that you have any questions. Uh, please do so. But if you feel safe, please come and join us physically next Sunday, January the 17th, that we're going to start meeting uh, in person and online uh, as well. So again, thank you for joining us this morning and uh, pray with me as I pray for us and I pray for you. Father, we come before you this morning. Uh, just to say thank you for loving us and for giving us the courage that we need to continue to be your children in a in a world full of chaos. Father, the things that are going on in our world right now, in our society right now, are just have us with a heavy heart because of how divided we are and how fragmented our society is. Father, and we pray for healing. We pray that you intervene, Father, and you pray that you give us the wisdom that we need, Father, to to spread love and peace and to spread service instead of division father help us to love one another teach us how to do that father see this morning as we uh, come to you we pray that the things that we do the things that we say father are always pleasing to you we want to be your servants and we thank you for everyone listening this morning and for everyone tuning in watching this we just pray a special blessing on them and we pray that uh, that you give them the heart that they need Father, that we all need to continue to serve you, to continue to serve you uh, strongly and closer every day. We thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me.
tuning in and thank you for continuing to watch we uh, live in a society that expects us to live and do just enough to get by I don't know if you feel that way but I think that sometimes we are um, we're trained since we're small since we're children to to do just enough and I'm reminded of that because in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus at one point said to his disciples, he said, if someone invites you to go with them one mile, if someone forces you to go with them one mile, go with them two miles. Now, what Jesus was talking about there is that th there was this law, right, that, uh, that a Roman soldier could come up to you if you were a Jew or if you were anybody among, among Roman rule. Uh, that if a, if a uh, Roman soldier would come up to you and say, hey, carry my stuff for one mile, there was a law that said that you had to do that. And Jesus goes above and beyond that and tells his disciples, you know, if, if anybody tells you to do that, not only go with them one, but go with them two. I can only imagine the reaction that the disciples had and that everybody listening had to that. And, and I mean, if it was me, I would say, why? Why go with them too, man? I'm having a hard enough time going with them the one mile. And that's just because I have to. Why in in my, in my anybody in their right mind, why would they go with them two miles? You see, but that's the thing. That when it comes to living for Christ, when it comes to living for God, our call, the call that has been placed on our lives is to go above and beyond. That's the name of the game when it comes to following Jesus. In our society, we have been for so long comfortable celebrating mediocrity. And, and this is what I mean. I remember a time uh, when we were going to school that you had to earn your rewards. You had to earn trophies. You had to earn certificates. As in, I, I went to school in Mexico uh, for a lot of my growing up years and I really didn't go to school in the States until you know I was kind of in middle school uh, and so I grew up not getting awards and not getting celebrated for everything when my kids were smaller and they started going to school it seemed that 
at the end of every year, everybody got certificates and everybody got trophies for any. And, and sometimes I think they would, the teachers would make up awards just so everybody would get a certificate so nobody would feel bad. When did we get to that point in our, in, in our society that we have to celebrate everything? Folks, and we do the same thing as adults. And that kind of society trains us not to go above and beyond for anything. It trains us to do just the bare minimum. But when it comes to living for God, folks, that's not what the kind of life that God calls us to. God calls us to live a life above and beyond for us to sacrifice, for us to give everything of ourselves. I want to talk to you this morning about a Bible story. I want to expose a Bible story to you. This Bible story we find in Genesis chapter 24. And I'm not going to read the entire chapter. I'm not going to read the whole story just for time's sake. But this chapter, this, this chapter deals with this particular concept in an episode that happened uh, in, in Abraham's life. Genesis chapter 24, verses 1 through 21, uh, is the story of a servant going out and finding a, a wife for Isaac. And, and well, I, I want you to go go read the story. And, and I'll tell you what, I'll just open my Bible here and I'll just kind of read a few verses through it. And, and just to kind of give you an, an idea of what's happening in the story. All right, so go to Genesis chapter 24. And in verse 1, we're, we're told, Now Abraham was old, well advanced in age in the Lord, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And so Abraham was a very blessed man in his old age. And he and, and he and as you continue to read the story, you find out that Abraham tells the oldest servant in the household, uh, he says, hey, it's time to find a wife for Isaac. What I want you to do is I want you to swear to me that you're going to go to the land where I came from and find a wife for my son, find a wife for Isaac. And so the servant says, OK, Lord, if that's what you want me to do, that's what I'll do. I swear to you, I promise that I'm going to go to your home where you're from originally and bring a wife uh, for Isaac. But the servant asks uh, Abraham a question. But he says, what if the young lady that I choose, what if she doesn't want to come? What if I try and convince her? What if I, I tell her what I'm there for and she chooses not to come? And Abraham says, well, if that happens, then I release you from your oath then you don't have to come back with a wife. But I know, Abraham says, but I know that this is God telling me to send you. I know you're going to find a wife for him. So the servant goes, he, he's traveling, and he's, and, and he's traveling with 10 camels that he brought from Abraham, uh, from Abraham's property. He grabs, he grabs 10 camels, and he goes off, and he goes off looking for a, uh, for a wife for Isaac. And so when he arrives, the place where he's supposed to arrive, there's a well there. And there's a young lady that is coming out of the town, out of the village, to grab some water from that, from that well. Now she has a pitcher uh, of, uh, on her shoulder, and that's how they used, to, they used to grab water from the wells. They used to have pitchers and, and big buckets. They used to carry them on their head or on their shoulder. And, you see, and, and uh, the servant sees this young lady coming out of the village and, and, and going to the well to get water. And he prays. The servant prays. He says, God, he says, Lord, let this be a young lady that you have set so I can take her home so she can be a wife to Isaac. And he says that prayer. And he says, the woman, the one who, who gives me a drink of water, let that be the one, Lord. That's, that's uh, the servant's prayer. And so he sees this young lady coming out to get some water and she gets water and she puts that, that picture back on her shoulder and he interrupts her and he says, young lady, can I have some water from your pitcher? And that's kind of where we jump into the story. Okay. I want to read with you verses 18 through 21, because that's where we jump into the story. And so when he, when the servant asks, can I drink from that water? She answers, in Genesis chapter 24 and verse 18. So she said, drink, my Lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the trough 
ran back to the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man wondering at her remained silent so as to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. This is a beautiful story. When you just kind of not gloss over it and not read over it and just stop and think about the things that this young lady did. And by the way, this young lady's name is Rebecca. You'll find that later on in the story. But this is a beautiful story of a young woman who goes above and beyond what is required. And going above and beyond set her apart. Look again at verse 19. Verse 19 says, And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Now, in our modern way of thinking, we say, well, that's not a big deal, right? Getting water for, her, for his camels too. I, I would have given the man a drink and gave his animal some water. We might even think that. But you see, for us, for you and me, giving water to anybody is not a big deal because it's just a turn of a faucet or handing somebody a bottle of water. Or for animals, you know, turning on the water hose outside. It, that's all it is. And we forget sometimes the, 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 the time that we're talking about here. Remember, there wasn't any plumbing there wasn't anything like that. There wasn't any faucets to turn on or turn off. No, she had to get water out of a well. And I don't know when the last time it was that you got water out of a well, but I can't remember the last time I did, right? But she had to get water out of a well. But not only for the man, but she had to get water for every single one of those camels. Now, I want you to realize that camels drink about 20 to 30 gallons of water each. Okay? Now, just think about the amount of water. And there were 10 camels. And the pitcher that Rebecca was holding was probably only 5 to 6 gallons of water. So I want you to just imagine how much water she was going to have to draw to fill up these camels. If she was going to fill up his camels, we're talking about a real chore here. Maybe an hour, maybe two hours, maybe two and a half hours pulling water from that well, filling up that trough so those camels had enough water to drink. This young lady has committed herself to quite a bit of work for someone that she doesn't even know. I mean, she doesn't know this guy from Adam, right? It's just somebody that showed up and asked her for a drink of water. And she says, well, I'm going to give you a drink and I'm going to give your camels a drink too. Who would do that? If it was us... If it was you or I, at best, some of us might have said, hey, how you doing? Hello, I'm fine. How are you? Maybe some of us would have even offered him a drink. Even a few of us might have told him, hey, you can borrow my pitcher. You can borrow my bucket so you can pull water for your camels if you want. But you got to hurry up because I got stuff to do. But how many of us would have committed to pouring water for all of his animals and then waiting until they were done drinking. You know what that meant for Rebecca? That meant that she was neglecting something else in order to serve because there's a reason that she needed water. There's a reason that she came out to get water to take back to her household. They needed water in her household too, but she was neglecting them and neglecting her responsibilities elsewhere in order to serve this one person and his, his herd of camels. We have been trained in our society in our culture, to do the least amount that's expected of us and get the maximum benefit possible. And something else that we do is that we might go as far as get upset or get angry with someone else when they go above and beyond. You know why? Because it makes us look bad. It makes us who are doing the bare minimum look bad. Too many of us want all the benefits of being a child of God while giving as little as possible to the kingdom of God. It's not that God is sitting here or there or in your home or in heaven or however you want to imagine that. It's not that God is sitting there watching how much we do or how much we don't. He's not keeping a tally and he's not keeping tabs. But I want to remind you of something this morning. We belong to him. He has called us to be different. 
If someone would have seen Rebecca doing what she was doing, what do you think would have happened? If someone would have watched this interaction between this man that she didn't know and Rebecca and the camels and this whole episode, if someone wants to watch that, what do you think would have happened? Well, maybe somebody would have criticized. So somebody would have went as far as saying, hmm, I wonder what she's fishing for. She must want something. Why would she do that? They must have looked at her with criticism. Maybe they would have looked at her with suspicion. And, and let me tell you something, that that's what happens to us in our relationship with God and in Christianity sometimes when we go above and beyond. We have others that criticize. We have others that look at us with suspicion. And let me tell you, that's something that's expected. It's something that's going to happen when we are living our life for God. We can expect criticism. We can expect to be persecuted a bit. Sometimes by some of our own. Everywhere we go, we are showing Jesus Christ to someone. And, my, and the question that comes up in my mind is this. What kind of Jesus are we showing? Are we showing a sloppy, lazy, just enough to get by kind of Jesus? Or are we showing a Jesus who is willing to give his best to those he encounters? Rebecca said, I will draw water for your camels too. Until they have finished drinking, not just a little bit, but until they're done. See, living for God means that we go above and beyond in everything, even the things that, that people don't expect us to. Because let me tell you that God will help us go a little longer and a little better if we make a commitment to him to go above and beyond. We cannot live our lives always measuring by, by what others are doing. We can't live our lives comparing ourselves to each other. No, we live our lives for God. We do things, though, sometimes backwards because we have the attitude of, well, if they don't do it, I'm not going to do it either. If they forget about me, well, I'm going to forget about them. Folks, our relationship with God doesn't depend on other people. It depends on what God has done for us. You see, we do and we live because God has done and Jesus has lived for us. Our response to the world and our response to each other is dependent or should be dependent on God doing for us. Above and beyond means living. Living in a way in that we don't respond to others. No, we respond like God has responded to us. We cannot walk that second mile until we walk the first. So many want to do great things for God without doing the little things. Kind of like taking over, the, over a business without any training. How are you going to do that? You're doomed to fail. Let me tell you something. You're never going to achieve Bible knowledge without actually reading and studying the Bible. We will never talk to anyone about Jesus if we don't take the time to conquer our fears and receive a little training and learn how to do it. If we can't serve in the little things, we're not going to be able to serve in the above and beyond. Do you remember when Jesus said at the end, when he talked about the end, what he was going to do at the very end of the world when he's going to come back and get his church? He said that he's going to separate two groups of people and to one he's going to say thank you for clothing me thank you for feeding me and thank you for giving me food we were willing to do the little things to the little people that means that we did it for the big guy that's what Jesus is talking about it means that we went above and beyond every day look this is what Rebecca did every day of her life Every day she would go to this well. Every day she would draw five gallons of water. Every day she would walk this well, get water, and come back home. This is something that Rebecca did every day for her family. What a repetitive, menial task, wouldn't you say? But doing that repetitive, menial task is what allowed her to go above and beyond today. See, a lot of us are waiting for the big moments, for the big decisions in life to decide that you're going to go above and beyond. Folks, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep living for God, and God is going to present you with the opportunity to go above and beyond. Do it every day 
with all those little things. Do them with all of your heart. Serve in every little way, in every little way with everything that you have. And then when we're doing those repetitive things, when we're going about living our lives, that's when God is going to open the door for you to make a difference in someone else's life. Go ahead. Have the courage to make the difference, to go above and beyond. You can finish reading this chapter and see what a difference Rebecca's willingness to, to go above and beyond made in her life. I want to encourage you to be faithful where you are so that you don't miss out when God sends a servant looking for you. Jesus didn't wait for us to get our act together to start to love us. No, he just loved us. He loved us into getting into putting our act together. He loved us so much that he came and interrupted our lives and did what was needed. God is looking for people who are willing to go above and beyond for him. If you're willing to become an above and beyond person, an above and beyond Christian, you start by confessing Jesus' name. You start by allowing yourself to being baptized and belonging to Jesus in the first place. And then he will make you a servant that is going above and beyond in everything that you do. But the decision is up to you. If you need help making it, or if you have any questions about what Jesus can do in your life, email us and let us know at minister at ntxcoc.com. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Restore my spirit, Lord, I need
thinking about what to talk about this morning pertaining to the Lord's Supper, I thought on many different things, and one thing just kept on coming back to my mind, and that was of Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 1. It says, If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interest of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance of his, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. As we think on this passage today, I would like us to think about how we come to the table, how we present ourselves with the understanding of the humility that Christ presented to us as an example. We are called to be humble remember that it was he that made the sacrifice for us and he did it willingly as we think on these words let us remember not only as we come to this table as we live our lives as we show others who we are we're called to be humble just as Christ was humble even to the point of death death on the cross Let's pray for the bread. Our dearly Father, we, 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 we come to you so grateful and honored. Lord, we, we at this time ask that you bless this bread, the symbol of your son's body that hung on the cross for all of our sins, Lord. Let us never forget that he humbly went to that cross. He went obediently as you asked him to. Lord, let us be obedient and humble, just as Christ was. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we come to you again, asking you to bless this cup, the symbol of your Son's blood that was shed for all of us, that covered the multitude of sins, Lord, we, we know we're not worthy, and for that we thank you for sending your Son to the cross so that we do have an opportunity to have a relationship with you and one day be home with you. Let us never take that for granted. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
I see my gracious Savior face to face when all is done. Is that his voice? I